Have you been waiting for these? Me too. The Sony WH-1000XM4s, which I will refer to as the XM4s from here on, are my favorite ever noise cancelling headphones. However, they have just been superseded by the WH-1000XM5s, which I will refer to as the XM5s from here on. And this is a fair few months earlier than expected, Thanks for that, Sony. But today, my coverage of the XM4s has generated nearly 1 million views. And that means the XM5s have a huge amount to live up to, almost too much. But today, I'm gonna to give you my first impressions of the XM5s. I've avoided every single review. I've not read or watched any of them. So this will be completely unbiased as always, but also completely uninfluenced. I also bought these with my own money. Sony did not send these to me. And this won't be a direct comparison with the XM4s. I do need more time with these to do that comparison. That will come soon. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell not to miss it. I bought the XM5s for £380 in the UK. You'll find them for $399 or €420, Euros, depending on where you live. But that places them firmly in the kind of these had better be good noise cancelling headphones bracket. Let's run through the specs very quickly. There's a brand new design, which I'll get onto later, and which Sony brilliantly calls noiseless. Sony tells us that the incomparable noise cancelling offered by the XM5s is the biggest ever step forward for their over-ear headphones. It's bolstered by a new V1 integrated processor and features four mics in each ear cup. There's also an auto optimizer, which modifies the noise cancelling based on wearing conditions and external environmental factors, including atmospheric pressure. The XM5s support high resolution audio too via LDAC, which can be transmitted wirelessly. And they also have the DSEE Extreme, which basically uses artificial intelligence to upscale compressed digital music. We're also promised the best call quality ever, which let's be honest, there's not much to beat when it comes to the XM4s. As for battery life, the XM5s are rated at 30 hours of playback time, and you can get three hours of playback time with just a three minute charge via a USB PD compatible adapter, which you don't get in the box. That all sounds rather fancy, doesn't it? But what on earth are these things like when you actually put them on your head? We'll start with noise cancelling because that is clearly the big play for Sony. They know how highly regarded the XM4s were in that area, and boy, have they leaned into it with the XM5s. First impressions, it's the best I've ever heard, again. It doesn't feel too oppressive. There's not much hiss when the music isn't playing. It's incredibly impressive. But it should be noted that the bar for noise cancelling these days is very, very high, and most brands get it right. I will be testing these in noisier settings over the next few weeks, but I think we're onto a very good thing here. In fact, they're the first pair of headphones I've put on recently where the noise cancelling is noticeably better than anything else including the XM4s. The only letdown is the ambient mode, which just is not as good as the AirPods Max transparency mode. And if you're not aware, that is basically when the outside noise is let in, and it does that through the microphone, so it kind of synthesizes the outside noise and lets you hear your surroundings and yourself. Now that's useful for two things. The first thing is just to be aware of what's going on around you, but also when you're talking. So if you're on the phone to someone, I'll get onto that later, then you wanna hear your own voice. And on the AirPods Max, transparency mode is fantastic. You can just hear yourself very, very clearly. The ambient mode on this, it's still not great. It's just, it's not quite loud enough. You can hear yourself, but it's not clear enough or loud enough. These feel like a very comfortable pair of headphones as soon as you put them on your head, but it is worth bearing in mind, as I always say, that comfort is very subjective. What works for me, what works for some people may not work for you. For me though, the XM5s are a bit hit and miss in this area. There's plenty of padding in that headband, so no issues there at all, but the ear cups aren't quite as well padded. In fact, the cushioning feels incredibly light. Sony calls it soft fit leather, and it consequently sinks the headphones into the side of your head more than some people will be comfortable with. The net result of that is that your ear is pressed a little more firmly against the inside of the ear cup and against that fabric that protects the driver. And the plastic casing around the driver does protrude slightly, which might cause issues for some. Personally, I could wear these for an extended period of time, but my left ear in particular does feel a little bit too close to that driver for comfort. Time will tell 
if that proves to be an issue, but it's just worth mentioning. If you can get a pair of these and try them on, I'd recommend doing so. And like most over-ear headphones, these do get pretty warm on your head when you've been wearing them for a little while. I live in the UK, so it's less of an issue, but if you live in a particularly hot country or a very humid environment, then it's something to bear in mind. Overall, the XM5s are comfy. I just wish there was a bit more padding here. When it comes to sound, as always, I tested the XM5s straight out of the box and with no EQ treatment. Now, I know you can EQ these, and I know a lot of people will say that the XM4s sound better with EQ, but again, EQ is very subjective, and I'd much rather hear what Sony thinks we should hear when you first put them on. So, I put them through their paces with a bunch of tracks I'm super familiar with, and which I always use for headphone testing. And on Unfinished Sympathy, that really deep sub bass is handled very, very nicely on the XM5s, and it demonstrates how well they can deal with those low, rumbly frequencies. And what's impressive is that when that low kick drum is teamed with everything else in that track, nothing gets lost. You can hear pretty much everything. Peter Gabriel's Sledgehammer was an absolute triumph on these as well. Crisp vocals, fantastic instrument separation. It was just a joy to listen to on these cans. Adore You by Harry Styles. Honestly, people always take the mickey out of me for this. Try that as a headphone testing track. It is superb. Regardless, it was handled very well on the XM5s. They handled the kind of growling bass part nicely, although it was a little bit boomy at times if I was to nitpick, but there was no distortion or fuss whatsoever when dealing with that filtered middle eight section. Steely Dan, Jack of Speed, absolutely shines on these XM5s, and it reveals that the mids don't appear to be quite as scooped as they are on the XM4s. So on these headphones, the mid-range is slightly dipped, which I quite like actually, but I think the Steely Dan track revealed that the XM5s have a slightly flatter response, I think. Breathe Again by Pop Evil sounded as massive and alive as it should do on the XM5s, and they really dealt with what is a massively dynamic, huge sounding track with loads of stuff going on really, really well. That's a really tough track to get right, I think, on headphones, and they dealt with it brilliantly. And these headphones really are as punchy as I hoped they'd be. That was always the case with the XM4s, and that became particularly evident during Don't Start Now by Dua Lipa. Overall, it's not a massively exciting sound, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's confident, assured, and it's very, very Sony XM series. Audiophiles might scoff at the way that I've described how they sound, but I don't care. These are consumer headphones phones, and if you buy them, you won't be disappointed with the sound. And if you're the sort of person who likes tweaking the EQ to get the sound how you like it, I can guarantee these will respond just as well to that as the XM4s. So, what does a noiseless design mean? Whatever that means to Sony, there are two things that strike you immediately when you get the XM5s out of the box. Firstly, they are incredibly light, almost comically light, and it would be, I think, easy to confuse that lightness with cheap, because there's barely any heft to these things at all. But when it comes to headphones, that's not really a bad thing. We do place these on our heads for long periods of time, after all, and compared to the likes of the AirPods Max, these are ridiculous ridiculously lightweight. The other thing that is immediately apparent is how quiet they are. There's no creaking, cracking, popping. Basically, there's no noise whatsoever as you move these around in your hands or place them on your head. If that's what Sony means by a noiseless design, they have absolutely smashed it. And it will please a lot of people because I used to get a lot of comments, and still do, about the XM4s being noisy when you move them around and put them on your head. When it comes to the design itself, it certainly is unfussy and, I guess, noiseless. I really like it. They're unmistakably Sony XM headphones, and they don't look anywhere near as massive in person as they do in the product photography. There has been one significant change though, which is the fact that these headphones don't fold like their predecessors. So the XM4s fold up like that. These don't fold at all. There's just no folding apart from the ear cups. I'm actually a fan of this. I've never been keen of this kind of needlessly complicated way of folding headphones just to get them in a case. When it comes to color, it's either black or this kind of off-white bone type color, not very exciting. Although this color is a bit brighter, a bit more interesting than the XM4 version. I just wish 
the white version of these, which you know is gonna come, because it came for the XM4s later on. I just wish the white version of these came at launch. When it comes to controls, you get two buttons, that's it, one for power on and off, which can also be pressed to find out what your battery life is, which I've always liked. The other one is for noise cancelling slash ambient mode. Everything else has to be done via touch controls on the right ear cup, which is okay. I'm not a fan of touch controls at all. I just want buttons, really. The Sony XM4 case is the gold standard. It is tough, durable. This one has not got a mark on it. I have no trouble throwing this in any bag. So the XM5 case has an awful lot to live up to and it's pretty good. It's quite a bit bigger. So that's the XM5 case. This is the XM4 case. They've kind of tried to address that, which I'll come on to in a moment, but in terms of the overall design, very nice and solid, and because the headphones don't fold over, putting the headphones into them is about as easy as it gets. You just open it up, twist around the ear cups, put them in, zip it up, done. Now they have got rid of that kind of back canopy thing that the XM4s had. I never used that, doesn't make any difference to me personally. What they've given you instead, if I just open it again, is this wonderful little flap. Now this is a magnetized flap, which can contain whatever you like, cables most likely. I think they've borrowed this from the Bose 700 series. I loved it on that case. That's a really nice touch, and to me, that's much more useful than that rear canopy thing. Where things get a little bit odd is if I take the headphones out, you realize that the case itself is collapsible. So it has these kind of folds around it here, and the idea, I think, is that when the headphones aren't in the case, you can more easily kind of crush it to put it in your bag so that it doesn't take up too much space. I don't really get it. I don't really understand why you'd want to do that because it doesn't really change the bulk of it that much. I guess if it was in a bag and you had things leaning against it, it would kind of push in. Very weird. Um, anyway, that aside, it is a great case. It's, um, yeah, top marks. I just don't get the folding thing, Sony, sorry. Sticking with the convenience factor, these of course charge via USB-C, and I think 30 hours of battery life is more than enough for anyone. I've always said that beyond 20 hours, you're golden. Having said that, being able to grab three hours of charge from three minutes of charge via a PD charger, which you don't get in the box, remember, that is rather welcome, I must say. On to calling quality, and I've always said in the past that I don't use headphones like this for calls. It's just not something I do, but I do get told off for not testing calling quality. So I did that with these. And as you might guess, my testing method is pretty straightforward. It's a case of, can they hear me? Can I hear them? And is it good enough quality to have a decent conversation? The answer to all three of those things is yes. It was a very clear call on both ends. I had no trouble. The person I was speaking to had no trouble at all. I'd happily use these as calling headphones occasionally. The reason I'm always a little bit reluctant to do so is because of that ambient mode. And going back to the AirPods Max, they are pretty good calling headphones because you can really clearly hear yourself talk. With the ambient mode on the XM5s, you can't. It's just not quite loud enough, and that does detract from the kind of calling experience. So although the quality of the call in terms of the audio is fine, the ambient mode does let it down. Now, I never get particularly excited about the additional features that you get on headphones like these because they're normally quite gimmicky, but it's worth mentioning the few that you get with the XM5s. Firstly, there is speak to chat, which recognizes when you're talking and pauses the sound to let the ambient noise in. It works, but it is a bit annoying if, like me, you talk to yourself a lot. It takes ages to switch off once you've stopped talking. And I just found as I was walking around the studio, muttering to myself, it kept stopping the music, which was a bit annoying. Personally, I think if you need to have a chat with someone, just take your headphones off. There is also Google Assistant and integration. I haven't tested either of those yet, but I will do at some stage. There's also multi-point connections via Bluetooth, which enables you to connect these headphones to two different devices. It works just as well as the XM4s. They're also compatible with Google's Find My Device, which I've not tried out yet, but that's quite reassuring. So Sony scored a home run with the XM4s in terms of noise cancelling, audio quality, the build quality, and that fantastic case. The XM5s build on all of that stuff, but not really in a barnstorming way. 
They're not underwhelming at all, and they are different enough to their predecessors to be interesting. They're also good enough by quite a long shot to be worthy of their place as Sony's flagship noise cancelling headphones. But there isn't exactly a massive raft of improvements on the table. The only exception to that rule is the noise cancelling, which is noticeably better than the XM4s and much better than pretty much anything else on the market. The sound too is typically Sony. It is brilliant. I think some people will feel that the price is a little bit steep given the kind of low grade feeling of the plastics, but we do live in a world where companies like Sony have to be more sustainable and that kind of thing is the obvious trade-off. Personally, I think they're well priced given the brilliant noise cancelling, the awesome sound, the lightness afforded by this kind of noiseless design. I do need longer with these and I need to pitch them against the other competition. I'll be doing that over the coming weeks, so keep an eye out for it. The only thing I would say is that these are still quite an expensive pair of headphones. And now they're here, the XM4s are only gonna get cheaper, which makes these an increasing bargain every single day. And if the price of the XM5s does put you off, keep watching for a link to a video I made recently where I compare three over-ear headphone brands you probably haven't thought of.